In this video, I'm going to talk about macros. The XVS G1 is capable of storing 250 macros. A macro is a programmable sequence of events or actions that you can store in one button. So let me show you how to create some macros. On the XVS G1, you can do that in two ways. You can either do it through the panel or you can do it on the menu. So first, I'm going to create a macro to change our multi-view layout. And I'm going to do it just in the menu. So if I come to the menu and I go down to the register, then I go down to macro and I go into edit register. I'm going to create my macro in number five because that's empty. So I'm going to say edit macro. And now you can see that I've got macro auto ins in red highlighted up here. So that means that it's recording every action I make. So I'm going to go down now, set up switcher, multi view. I'm going to change some of the sources I've got here. So you can see I've got clip stores along this row. I'm going to change that to some frame memories instead. So just put in some different content in there. Like so. And then I'm going to change the actual layout as well. So I'm going to put the program and the preview on the bottom like that. And I'm also going to change the information position. So I've chosen to have this the layout on outside window. So if I've got any audio playing, the bars will come up there. And I think I'm finished. So I'm going to go to edit macro. This takes me back into my macro. And now you can see it's been recording what I've been doing and it's populated all these different events down here. So I've done six different actions. I'm going to store that as number five. Now that's stored. So now when I come to the register, you can see I now have a macro there and I can label it something that I understand like multi-view two. And then you see that's also come up down here in my FlexiPad. So when I'm on macro, I'm on multi-view two, and then I can switch to multi-view one, and then back to multi-view two. So that's how you create a macro in the menu system. The next thing I want to show you is how to create a macro just on the desk. So to do this, I'm going to create a macro on ME1, which basically uh, does an auto transition mix uh, cuts a key on and then I want it to stay like that until I trigger it again to cut that key off and um, do another transition. So I might be doing something like that if I was feeding a screen, for example. So I'm going to put the macro into record mode. I hold down this macro button and then I click an empty register like that. And now you see we're in this recording menu. Now, when I have auto insert on, that's going to be doing the same as what it was doing on the menu. And it's just recording everything I do. Uh, sometimes you might be uh, recording a macro and then you might make a mistake and you don't want to store it. So you can turn that off. Or if you're just not quite sure and you just want to mess around a little bit and work out what you need to do, then you can turn that off. It won't record it, turn it back on and it will record it. Another thing you can do as well is you can hold down this feature and you see it's changed color there. And what that will be doing is it will be recording all my actions that I make on the desk, um, but it's doing it in real time, which is not something I want to do. So I turn that off and I'm going to put my auto insert back on. And now I'm going to do some things on my ME1. So I want to create an auto transition, I want to make a mix. So I've got this transition panel set to wipe. So I want to set it to mix. And then I'm going to make the mix. And you see, it started to store these actions here as events. Now, I'm also going to cut on my key one. And you see, I've got a picture in picture there. And now I want to create a pause. So I'm going to hit pause. But I'm going to put it to zero. Now what that does is it's going to now do all those actions up to that point and it's just going to stop. And then when I uh, trigger it again, 
that's when it will then do the rest of the actions that I'm about to do. Pauses are really useful in macros because um, if you don't put any pauses in, then every single action you do, like we did earlier with the multi-view, it's all going to happen at the same time. And sometimes you don't want that to happen. So for example, if you had a clip playing on a key, you obviously don't want that key to turn off before the clip stopped playing. So you need to have a pause the length of that clip. Um, so that's why we put pauses in. Now I'm going to take my key off and I'm going to do another mix. And now I'm going to store all of that onto M7. So now if I make sure, yep, see my M1 is on my monitor. If I hit that macro, you can see that it's done all those actions up to where I put that pause in. And so there we've got our picture in picture. And then if I hit take down here, it completes the rest of the actions. Now say that you've created that macro down here and you've left something out. What you can do is go back into the menu, look in your register, find your macro, which is here, and I might name that something a little bit more meaningful, like ME1 mix, for example. And then I go into edit macro. And now you can see all those actions that have been created um, down there. And say in this example, uh, I want to change the set duration of this pause, then I can just click on that line, edit event, go to time, and just put some kind of duration in. So you can see now that it's updated my duration. And I can also add new events down here as well. Um, and you'll see just like uh, in the one we were recording last with the multi viewer, the macro autos in is highlighted up here. So it is recording everything I'm doing. So I could go into other areas in this menu and add things that way as well. Um, and you also know that that's happening because you can see the macro button here highlighting green. So that just lets you know that that macro auto ins is on. Um, so I've changed that. I'm going to store it. And now you'll see when I hit that, it does those actions without me then taking the ones at the end um, because I no longer have the pause zero. It's now set to a duration. So the last thing I want to show you is how to attach these macros to a panel button. So you can recall these macros from the FlexiPad over here, um, but sometimes it's nice to have them somewhere up near where you're cutting. Um, so to do that, I'm just going to open the attachment page on here. And actually now you can see we have a macro already attached and it's telling me it's the multi-view one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach it up uh, here and I'm just going to change the, the display mode. So, so here we go. So these are still my sources, but now this is split and you can see this is where the macro is attached. So this is my multi-view one layout. So if I hit that, then you see we've gone back to that multi-view layout. Um, I'm just going to show you if I don't have this macro attach enabled here, then when I hit that, it doesn't work. So if you ever have macros attached and you can't understand why they're not working, then it's probably because you haven't got your macro attach enabled. So now that works. To attach a macro, so I'm just going to say here that my target register for this is number seven. You see, ME1 mix. And now I'm going to hold down this pre-macro and post-macro button together. And, it, and you see now that this is flashing, so that's just telling me that I've got a macro already there. So I don't want to overwrite that. So I'm going to stick that there. And now you see I've got my ME1 mix macro there and I can hit that and it performs my macro. So I hope that gives you a comprehensive introduction for how to store and create macros on the XVSG one.